Hi, Justin. Can you tell us how you became interested in digital communication? <laughs> I uh, originally went to UniSA, actually, um, and I did a Bachelor of Visual Communication there. Um, I, uh, at the, towards the end of that, I didn't really know how I was going to apply what I was learning exactly. I had a bit of an idea. I was interested in it, but I, I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't find how I was going to apply it. So there was a guy that I was um, working with at the time at, uh, at Harris Scarf, actually, and uh, he showed me some of this amazing uh, 3D work that he was doing at a, a, a private college called Pride Centre for Excellence. And uh, I thought, oh, wow, I've got to go check this place out. And I went around, had a look at all the student work that was coming out of there, and it was really practical and hands-on. And I thought, wow, yeah, this is this is for me. I always had an interest in computer games and animation and TV and stuff. And I thought, wow, this I, I just didn't know where to go to learn that kind of stuff. So I had sort of the... The, the grounding in visual communication, understanding from university, but then I went to Pride Centre for Excellence and, uh, yeah, uh, learned to uh, apply my craft there. Um, I guess from from there, then um, I, I actually worked for the for the college for a while and I started to pick up freelance gigs just here and there with some of the the. Uh, um, uh, I was I was pitching the the college to um, kids out of schools and. Um, uh, I was winning freelance gigs from some of their parents who run their own businesses. And I thought, wow, this is really easy. I'm actually beginning to make a bit of a living just from freelance gigs. And I thought, this is really awesome. I'm going to start my own business. And then I started the journey of hardship after that. <laughs> but uh, out of out of several failed businesses, uh, Monkey Stack was sort of born from those ashes and sort of here we are today. So, I mean, back back then when I started business back in 2000, there was like, Pretty much just Rising Sun and Kojo and the local circuit and that was it. And, you know, back then Rising Sun was like 10, 11 people. And I was like, well, you know, and Kojo was the visual effects department was one. So I was like, I, I can't get a job in Adelaide <laughs> at, the, at the time. And it's amazing to see what's happened in the last 20 years in this little town. But, you know, we're really kicking goals on a, on a global circuit and it's really great to see. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely exploded. I've only lived here for 12 years. And even in that time, it's just the industry has just expanded exponentially. Sure um, now, with Monkey Stack, can you tell us a bit more about what Monkey Stack does and how it all started? Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, Monkey Stack is a bit of a, like we're a digital kind of chameleon. Uh, it's a really multifaceted kind of business. And I think it's a symptom of growing the business in Adelaide. Uh, you know, we bootstrapped the business with uh, a couple of other guys, started it in 2004 and uh, just operating in my parents' uh, rumpus, rumpus room at their place. Uh, you know, typical story, a bunch of young guys, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to keep some money, we're going to be amazing. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we started the business on the back of getting a, a game project up with the ABC, South Australian Film Corporation, as well as a corporate comms uh, gig that was also a short film with... Uh, Calypso. Uh, so we kind of had our, had our uh, I guess, our start in this business um, doing, you know, a game and then a film that happened to be um, an advertisement as well. So, you know, we, we're essentially digital storytellers um, and uh, have an understanding of interactive design, but also the animation side and the storytelling aspect as well. And we've kind of, we started the business there. We started to move. Uh, we got a lot of interest into in kids TV um, for a while there. The game that we made for uh, the ABC uh, got pirated and translated into a stack of different languages and spread all over the world. And to us, that was a great success. People actually wanted to be bothered going to that effort to pirate our game. So we're like, yes, we're, we're winning here. This is good. And the ABC were right behind it. They said, hey, let's make a TV show of this game. And uh, so we spent the next few years developing that and getting other gigs with Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and it was all looking really good. We just couldn't, we're just a bit green. We just couldn't get off the ground back then. Um, a little bit too early, a lot of interest, but just too early. And we didn't quite know how to close close the loop on a deal. Um, and so we nearly bled out back then from from doing that. Uh, so we were like, oh, we can't can't keep doing this. We're gonna we're gonna run out of we're gonna run out of money. So we backed off that and decided, uh, well, how where can our skills that we've learned in you know animation and interactive design and games and storytelling, 
what other industries do they do they fit? You know, and we had to like just zoom out a bit and go. We can't be in entertainment because that's just that's a that's a bun fight. We can't can't get the can't find the money there. So we backed off and we had a little bit of experience in advertising corporate comms. So we sort of shifted the whole focus of the business and really honed in on advertising. Um, and that really, uh, for the most part, has been sort of the backbone. Of, of the business where we've started to really generate, you know, good return, um, uh, you know, decent profit margins. But now we're able to look at, you know, and we've built a wonderful team around us. It's like almost 30 of us now. And we're able to now then funnel some of those profits and back into some of those more creative and ambitious endeavours that we had always wanted to back in 2004. But now after this long journey, we're finally at the point where we can where we can finally start doing it again. So we're, we're, we're making that, that shift um, from doing service work into developing some of our own IP and, and floating that out as markets. And, yeah. Long answer. That's, that's a journey. No, I like it. No, that's that's amazing. It just goes to show that nothing is really linear. So, no <laughs> but way. it's good that you've kind of yeah shuffled back into what your original passion was with it as well. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's great to be able to come back to it. It feels like we kind of had to give up our passion for a while, while we just became stable and could pay mortgage for mortgages and families and all that kind of stuff yes the things of life yeah <laughs> <laughs> just life yeah. <laughs> yeah just life that's right yeah. um, so what's when we say like game design and vfx what's involved in that Ah, oh, God, that's a big question. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess at the heart of it, it's all story, right? And um, if you rewind back from there, you, you always start with, um, you know, someone who's got a, got a message uh, that they want to communicate to an audience of some kind, really, isn't there? So it's about, um, and I guess that's what we've discovered over the years at Monkey Stack is we started mostly as a production company, but, it, you know, the assembly line, someone will come to us, they've got a script, they know what they want it to look like and we go yeah okay we can make that and we make it um that's kind of evolved now and we've got a much stronger sense of sort of you know, i guess digging into the, the why we're making it we often find customers coming to us now and they're saying um oh i've got this thing i want to you know communicate it to this specific audience uh, and then we, you know, unpack that and it's like, well, why? And when you start asking those questions, really digging into what their strategic ob business, uh, objectives are, um, you can uncover all sorts of things and often it spins projects in different directions. So um, sometimes that might end up as a game, uh, might end up as a, as a, as a film. Um, but I guess all these, uh, in, in essence, we've still got, you know, this message that needs to be told and the audience and it's about how, how we get there. That is the is the decision to be made, and you know sometimes a game is the best route. Sometimes it's a film with heavy visual effects, um, and I guess that's more from you know I'm rewinding your question a little bit back to sort of the core underlying essence of it. But I think it's important that people understand you know uh, why they are using a particular medium to tell that story, whether it is game or film or it's an experiential artwork or installation. I don't think it's enough to say, well, my skills are just in this particular area. Therefore, this story, I have to use those skills to tell it. Sometimes it's best to say, well, it would be better if it was done a different way as a live action film or a fully animated experience, or it should be a game because of X, Y, Z. Um, so I think it's the critical thinking that goes into the decision as to why you're making the game or the visual effects for a film um, that need to be asked first. And then, and then after that, it just becomes more practical application of the execution of that, um, which, you know, I could go into greater detail as to how that, you know, for games or visual effects or whatever. But um, I guess um, in those particular industries and even more so in, in games, it's just this wonderful... Uh, multidisciplinary sort of skills that come together to produce these these amazing works and uh it's it's pretty rare that you find sort of one one person armies that can sort of do every aspect of it by themselves you know there's some amazingly talented um individuals out there who who can um but unfortunately most of us aren't quite as as gifted um and so it's important i think for very carefully considered uh collaboration with other talented people to help bring these projects over the line but but really exciting when you when you you know you bring art science and tech 
all in to meet each other. That's that's where things get really, really cool and really exciting. Yeah, and yeah, we feel that it, at mod. <laughs> that's right. Like mod, yeah. mod, 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 <laughs> and monkey stack. Same, 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 but different. One displays, one produces. <laughs> For sure. It's nice to hear about that sort of collegiate na- uh, uh, notion amongst the industry. Um, and But maybe going back a little bit, what are, what are some of those considerations and, and sometimes roadblocks that, uh, that you encounter when you're designing games or creating visual effects? Uh, I think um, sometimes, well, there, there's two, two end, ends to that. Um, I think... Uh, there's, there's the there's the top top down issue where the creative vision for the project isn't aligned with what's achievable within the um, resources at hand, budget or time, and I think that's a, a quite a common mistake, even in quite experienced um, directors and producers. Um, uh, and then there's the um, bottom up issue where the the audience just um, is not. Um, Perhaps hasn't been consulted or uh, uh, let to have a voice in that that development or creation process. You know, uh, so it's a, you know, and then you've got you know directors, producers above you're above the line people here, and then you've got all your audience say here, or well, let's put them left and right here, so one isn't above the other. <laughs> then you've got all your production people in here. Um, these people are much more connected to to the audience often than the, than the directors and, and producers and stuff over here. And it's about how to bridge. How to bridge that gap between between I think between the two. Um, I think if you can f- find ways of doing that, and you know the internet is a great place uh, to enable doing that um, fast iterative deployment of content. You know to to test uh, features or ideas, bring people together really quickly to try something, and then you can disperse again, bring a new bunch of people in. You know um, that I think just uh, being mindful of that fast iterative development rather than just trying to go for it go for absolute gold in that first instance um, is, is, is really important. And I know I, I've been so guilty of that so many times of just like, oh, we're just going to make it. It's going to be amazing. And just <laughs> getting uh, locked on a, on a single track. It's kind of, and then looking back and going, oh, shit, how did we get here? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And do, do you find then that like when you are um, open to those changes and, and getting that research back and, and um putting that back into the project, that projects can change dramatically oh, in that, during that process? Yeah. yeah, particularly interactive projects. Yeah, they just go on this wonderful meandering journey and you just hope that you've got enough resources to keep keep moving. <laughs> but it's but that's definitely, the magic. Uh, yeah. it, that is, that's the secret source there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I, you know, and, and it, it just takes um, time and experience to be able to understand and get, have that strong feel for, you know, how that, that project is tracking and whether, whether you are going to actually complete it to a reasonable level or not. But, you know, identifying, I guess, you know, what your key, what your key must-haves out of your project really are and staying really true to that um, and don't get distracted by, you know, feature creep and a whole lot of other things coming into the mix where you think, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, and then you start developing this other little thing over here that's not really core to the product that you're developing. Start with the core and then start then building out with their, out from there with all the spare time and money and resources that you have. Yeah. <laughs> it never seems yeah. to happen. <laughs> And speaking of spare time and money and resources, how has your industry been going through the last few months? Have you have you been disrupted or have you had to sort of change direction or, yeah, how's yeah, it going yeah. for you? I guess we were, um, having worked more recently over the last few years with you guys and doing the um, signature project for Fringe with the Yellica, um, we're sort of, we were building up the experiential side of our business. So in installed art, like artworks in live spaces. And we were doing a lot more live action work as well. And so that side of the business is pretty much just pretty much stopped at the moment. I guess if we were only in that industry, we would be in, in real strife, I guess, at the moment. I, I think because our skill sets and our background is more in digital content creation. Uh, we found <clears throat> that that side of the business is still really, really strong. Um, you know, I, and I guess there was a lot of um, uh, um, customer confidence and uh, business confidence dropped away. So lots of projects got put on hold or delayed. There's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. And we found some jobs were being 
some were being pulled right forward. It's like, now, 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 it has to be done immediately. Others got delayed, others got cancelled. It's just, just so random and really bitsy. Um, uh, but uh, I think uh, we found what we did find though across across the board is that so many customers who might not normally have time for their digital content strategies because they're too busy doing other things, all of a sudden had all this time on their hands. They're like, well, what we can do is turn our attention to our our you know our digital presence, and they realise the importance of that. So that that whole side of the business sort of lifted while other bits of it sort of fell over <laughs> um, and I think that's similar across the board you know so all, I mean for you guys or the arts and installation sort of stuff just had to, has to stop uh, festivals all that sort of gear um, and of, of course the, the film industry or the, the live action uh, complexities around live action shoots you know we're dealing with um, uh, Microsoft's volumetric capture suite over in um, San Francisco at the moment and with everything that's going on in the US they're like well we don't know when we can open again so um, you know, so it's impacting production definitely. You know, we had other, we're doing a shoot down in the Antarctic as well, another job, and the boats just decided, no, that's it, we're not going there anymore, and then we'll shut down. And some of those are looking like they might even, their whole businesses might collapse. So it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, pretty much across the board, you know, but it's, it's been really disruptive. But, you know, where, where there's a whole lot of stuff falling over, I'm finding that there's a whole lot of stuff sort of popping up in this place, like whack a mole. I like that's a good analogy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like you're saying, people are creating so much more content, and that's where your mainstream is kind of focused on. How do you think are, are games and content keeping people connected during that disruption? Do you think they're kind of coming together and meshing over that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think well, it's all all the internet, right? So. Uh, and games and social platforms are just giving people a way of just keeping that connection. You know, I'd hate to think what this, um, uh, you know, this pandemic would have been like if there was no internet. It would be, or, I mean, and then furthermore, if you took like, you know, television or phones out of the equation as well, I mean, how, how would we all be coping then, you know? Uh, you know? So uh, we're, we're lucky that we've got it. And I think these, these, um, methods of communications and things to do within these platforms are helping keep people um, uh, yeah, mentally um, healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a gamer myself. So for me, it was like, I've got more time to play games, but yeah. it's Woo. quite interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see people taking up games to fill that space as well you know mm -hmm. and of course you know the release of animal crossing was a ridiculous the timing was just you can't even plan that so <laughs> no. yeah it's, it's, it's interesting to see all the new people coming to the table as well yeah the um, non-traditional gamers yeah it's it's really good and i don't I, I haven't seen the games industry be affected at all if anything i think their revenues going up i haven't seen the numbers but i'm making a gross assumption there but i, I almost put money on that if i was a betting man yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I would too. Um, so moving forward or even people looking at it at the moment, what are the opportunities or how can people get involved in the industry at the moment? Uh, for emerging artists and practitioners? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, think, I think the biggest thing is, is try and get connected where you can. Um, uh, get a feel for the landscape who's out there. I mean, there's a, if you're interested in games, um, Game Plus is a hub of gamers here in, uh, in Adelaide, it's set up by a mob from Canberra, actually. Um, I think there's a few dozen game developer businesses there that they run all sorts of talks and other things. Um, so that'd be one way. Uh, I think, you know, uh, through uh, the likes of Mod and other online communities, um, I think that's, you know, just just get connected, get get out there, and sort of show your work wherever you can. And it's a little bit hard at the moment. Um, a lot of those sort of events aren't really happening right now. But uh, I think I think that's the biggest um, piece of advice that I can get give is to just get out there and get connected, get known. Um, if you don't, if you're looking for work, you know, if you don't show your face at these things, you'll never be known. Um, and and you know, work at building that really strong portfolio of work um, that's as diverse and interesting as you can possibly make it. Yeah, and like you've outlined, it's not linear. It's not a linear process. <laughs> no, if there was like one path to victory, I would swear I would tell everybody. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, meaning, meaning of life, I don't know, 42 or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I think we've had that answer before in an episode of our yeah. TV. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. I love it. It keeps popping up. That's great. <laughs> um, and speaking of the the near future or the the far future, what's uh, what's on the cards for you? What's your next projects? Uh, yeah, I guess well, we've got got some work bubbling away with you guys at the moment. We're working on the uh, refactoring of Fable. So Fable was that uh, interactive exhibit that we had uh in at mod um last year and that was all about based around the pillars of consent and uh that was successful enough uh to uh be reversion to become an app version of that so uh we're sort of chipping away at that right now uh we're working on a, a virtual reality documentary at the moment as well about sir ernest shackleton and his journey of survival um through the Antarctic and South Georgia. Uh, so that's a sort of a VR uh, recreation kind of piece where we're in point like doing the volumetric motion capture and photogrammetry, uh, stitching that with uh, 360 footage from, sh shot from the region. So this should be a, like as close as you can get to going to South Georgia and the Antarctic without actually going there. Uh, so that's an interesting project. Um, that's sort of chipping away at that. And we're sort of, I guess, for Adelaide, we're, we're a big, big fish, I guess, in this kind of industry, in a small pond. So we've really turned our attention to look nationally and internationally now. You know, we're picking up some gigs overseas. Uh, recently, we did we gamified a, a vocational-based theme park uh, in Qatar, and we did a, a, an animation series for those guys. We did a suite of other games for a French company, the location-based games. Uh, unfortunately, it's like for deployment in supermarkets where kids could go into these spaces and play with balls that you know, throw at a wall that interacted with some digital content and stuff. So that's sort of on pause at the moment. So yeah, that um, we're just about to finish a uh, animation series with um, uh, Adult Swim called YOLO. That's with Princess Pictures and uh, Michael C animator Michael Cusack. Um, so yeah, there's yeah there's tons of different and then we just got oh, I don't know dozens of like these other crazy client projects which are all sorts of things from you know health apps and um uh um interact i uh, so there's some other interactive exhibit things on the horizon and we're also looking at how we can um put uh, the gig we did for fringe yabara into into a box and send it uh, overseas as well so that, that that can go on a bit of an international circuit so yeah there's there's heaps of things going on um it's lots of fun yeah, that was, uh, they all sound amazing. And and some of them I've seen, Fable uh, was yeah, an absolute audience favourite um, from visitors to the gallery. So I'm sure there'll be lots of people that will be really interested in that becoming kind of standalone game that they can they can play on their devices. Um, and yeah, Yabra was just magical and, and more people should see it. So yeah, any way that can get out there and, and travel the world, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, it would be great. And also, uh, you're doing some a uh, little bit of interactive uh, for our next exhibition. Uh, that's oh, sorry. In Feb 2021, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I forgot to mention that one. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not directly involved in that. as some of the other guys. Um, but yes, that's looking really, really cool. Um, that's uh, feeding frenzy. Yes, um, sort of about schooling fish. Yes, and you can um, run around and play with the fish. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know how much oh. I'm allowed to give away, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's yeah, that that's enough. That's nice. Yeah, little little teaser there. You will have to uh, come along to Feb twenty twenty one to our next exhibition to check that out. Um, thank you so much, Justin. We've really appreciated you coming into the program today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to seeing Mod come back, come back online, so yes. we can yes. actually visit we'll, the space again. Yes, that's way. right. We'll be yeah, live yeah. on the from the eighteenth of August. Awesome. So, really yeah, good. great to see you IRL then. <laughs> IRL, yeah. That's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Justin.